Well, as you can see, it's Sydney doing all the celebrating at three-quarter time. They lead 11-11 to 4-5. Now, bear in mind, Collingwood kicked the opening two goals of the game. So Sydney with 11 of the last 13. Goods has been outstanding. He's been at a couple of goals as well and has run riot tonight. And Travis Cloak, a lone hand on the forward line, has booted three. Let's go down to Richo on the boundary. Thanks, Dennis. Well, we know Collingwood went in with the three-tool structure tonight, kicked the first two goals of the game, but since then it hasn't worked. Only seven marks inside 50, five of them to Travis Cloak. Sydney have got numbers back and simply haven't allowed them any space at ground level. All of Collingwood's goals have come from marks. They've shut down the Collingwood forward line completely, then worked a lot harder offensively the other way. They've been outstanding. And we're going to head over to Doc Larkins. You've got a bit of news on Sam Reid. Yeah, well, the only real negative for the third quarter was uh, Sam Reid's left quite nine minutes in he's ripped the central tendon down the front of the thigh so that's uh, you know we've seen Dane Beams uh, miss the whole season up to round nine with the same injury so the left thigh is iced it up or subbed out straight away and expect him to miss uh, a month or more Richo cool. thanks for that Doc so the best result of a month and he's played himself back into a bit of foot Collingwood probably well they're too far back surely but their percentage has gone from 96 to 9 to 91 now it's a bit of an issue for them right now I know they've still got to play the GWS's and uh, Melbourne they haven't played. Those teams that are way below them, but that percentage for them could be a factor. Not a good nine weeks, is it? I mean, no. you're nine weeks in, you're getting towards the half point, and the fixture does really lopsided a lot of things like percentage and who you played and who you haven't played, but nevertheless, that's a fair, that's a poor indication, I guess, of their season as a whole. Twelve teams have got a percentage of 103 or better right now. Yeah. Sydney have got a chance really to absolutely bury them here tonight. Now, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to do it in the last quarter. Well, there are two strong reputations on, on the line at the moment, and the Swans really want to put away a side, and the Pies, geez, they need to save some face. Imagine 48 points, final term on a Friday night. Jolly wins it down, taken by Kennedy, who floats it down towards half-forward. Pitches in front of Maxwell. Walton giving him the once-over, spills across to McCaffer, back to Maxwell in desperate trouble. Tries to go looking there for Russell, coming in is Kennedy though. He couldn't do much with it either. Bolton, he's been after everybody in that contest. O'Brien went down, well done by Russell, found a way through. And kicks to centre wing, Cloak sets him to, oh gee, he's been very good in that situation. He kicked three of the four goals tonight and taken a lot of good marks. It's not a great kick coming in. Grundy, Cracker, roving it brilliantly. We've seen too little of that tonight. Seedsman really should have taken the mark. Jenna worried him out of it. Put the tackle on. Sydney do well. Now Chesky and McGlynn, who's been just so productive and industrious. And again, they're able to get it wide and run. And Jack, who runs and carries as well as anyone in the competition, going down the line. Lamb's been impressive coming on. He just fits in, doesn't he? Yep. Do you know him, Mickey? I've only met him once uh, before, but uh, he's adapted well straight into that Sydney side and uh, he's been made to earn a spot. And uh, you can see the, the benefits and the, they're playing very, very well. Pike, double-hander down to Kennedy. Tracks it towards the boundary. Tackled from behind by his namesake. And between the two of them, they tumble and the umpire calls for it. Yeah, well, it's good news for the Swans. McCaff has done a pretty good job on Kennedy. Mm. Kennedy hasn't been an influence, but they've got such a strong you know, eight men to a midfield group uh, all contributing so they can have one of their really good players down and it can still be uh, be covered they've simply been bullied though by sydney tonight haven't they too tough side bottom in trouble <laughs> that was improvising under pressure and it's deemed to throw so sydney get the football just forward of center wing it's one of those nights where you look at colling and say now who plays well when you're getting hammered who are the blokes that uh, are not playing well when things are not going well and uh, it can be very revealing these nights and Sydney go inside that forward 50 Brown at the back belting away well done by O'Keefe to Goods he's been so brilliant tonight what a handball what a goal they're having a night out Jack hammering at home well they're just making something out of not a lot and Goods's vision tonight has been brilliant. And Russell pulls up short just as his team has pulled up tonight. Very, very yeah. short. Yeah. Well, we're seeing why they're the Premiership team last year. That even spread of pressure, footy hard running on hard running defensively, tough in the contest, and then a really hard running on the spread to attack. Look at the vision here from Adam Goods. He knew there would have been a voice from Kieran Jack. He's the leader of the footy club, co-captain. 
And they are just all over Collingwood at the moment, just outworking, outplaying, more teamwork, far less selfless approach, dominant. Well down by Collingwood. It was jolly. They get it out of the middle. Towards half forward. Kick came from Blair. Malczewski knocks it close to the boundary line, confronted by Cloak. Squeezes one away. It bounces only as far as Seedsman. Gets it back from side bottom. He's 52 metres out, but kicks it straight to Rampy. And Rampy feeds Grundy. Grundy in the back pocket then chips to Hanabry. Hanabry looks back towards the middle. Thought about Kennedy. Decided not to go. 83 plays 29. Lamb. Well, did the hard work. It was a strong lead. He came at the man with the football very aggressively, but spilt the mark. There's a Russell injury. So just here, you can see. He's just yep. slipped over his own ankle, really. Yep. Yeah. So, front spot, Pike. Well done, Clark, to Pendlebury. And then clever Pendlebury gets to Williams, back to ball. A handball to Dwyer. Hardly called his name tonight, Dwyer. Can kick a goal, though, we know, and does. Well, Nick Maxwell described him maybe as the recruit of the season this week, and I think it was a fair call, considering where he'd come from. Uh, you know, the mature age and the battle he'd had, and he's had a terrific year, but a quiet night tonight. But he's not alone, is he? No, it's been a hard battle. It's always easy to play well in a, uh, in a good team when a team's playing well. And Collingwood haven't been tonight, so it's been hard work for every individual within their, within their 22. We saw Jordan Russell limp off the ground before. There he is on the bench now, having some work done. It's an ankle issue. Uh, it looks like he may be in a bit of trouble for the rest of the night. Rucks go at it again. Jolly reaching over the top. Though Mumford got first hand to it. Jolly's taken down. Or is he? No, he's not the mid the sandwich there. It's ball. No, no, it was, it's, just front, it's just front on. It's okay. The empire says it's a fun time. Thank you. <laughs> not if you're calling, Wood. Thanks, Luke. Let's go. Thank you. Front on, I oh, think. Oh, that's what he said. They have got it wrong <laughs> already a couple of times tonight, then. Uh, Mumford in trouble. Did the on. next best thing. He fell on his opponent. Big tree. Socket off the ground eventually by Swan. Down towards half forward. Opens Aye things on. up. Cloak could have been pushed in the back. Umpire must have thought he took a dive. One thing or the other. Swan digs it out. Yay. Ball hasn't stopped trying. Kicks inside the forward. 50. Oh, that's a good mark by Elliott. He's a spring heel jack. Mm. Come out, Dane. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That's here. Might have been the Anzac Day game where he was just launching at everything and missed timing his league, yeah. but that just shows Dang. you what he can do. Got five against Carlton. We saw him that day, and he was very impressive. He's got all the tools. Just needs to have them all in one game. Bits and pieces. The Carlton game was quite outstanding. That's the benchmark as he comes in and kicks the goal. So Collingwood with a little rally here. But the sting squarely out of the game. He's a player, injury player, earlier. Jared McVeigh was on him for different parts of the first half. I think Smith's on him at the moment. But I think the whole competition knows now if the ball's in the air, he'll jump at it. So they're going to be matching him up with defenders who are probably pretty good in the in the air. Just looking at the starting four for Collingwood in the centre. Dane Swan's in there. He's spent a lot of time across halfback. Might ask Richo to keep an eye on him just to see how he's moving. He hasn't really been fluent tonight. Mumford, Jolly sort of waited for him. O'Brien's been good. Lamb got to him and Jolly swings a handball away. Hanabry twisting and turning. Back to Malcheski. Cute kick and a good one to Mumford to Hanabry. And that one cut off by Cracker. Jolly gets down low. Run a free kick. It's a Collingwood free kick, runner interference, Darren Jolly. So you heard the explanation from the umpire. So Collingwood with back-to-back -back goals for the first time since the first two goals of the match. And there is that Spring Hill, Jack from Elliott. And Swan was in the picture there. McGlynn 
against the flow, McVeigh, Elliot did well, robbed him of it, Blair's been quiet, can Swan kick a goal, smothered, he's had one of those nights, he's been smothered all night to be honest, Richards and then Pendlebury, ball not coming out, and the ball up. There's no doubt it hasn't been Dane Swan's night, but we know how consistent he is. You see the runner here bumping into Darren Jolly. But he just hasn't run with any fluency and been able to find space. But that's been the case for the whole Collingwood side. It's just been a great defensive effort by the Swans. The Swans by 42 points then. Dwyer did well. Smothered that kick from O'Keefe. Oh, went back. back to O'Keefe. He gets a free kick. Jolly hasn't won over the umpires so far. I don't think it's going to start now. That's another word. Save it for another day. Invest in the future. Belcheski runs away from half back, goes long. Guess who's leading back goods? Will it sit obligingly for him? Sort of. Wheels around, looks towards the opposite pocket. High ball, camped underneath it. Seedsman, Brown did well. Got a fist on it, knocked it towards the boundary. And side bottom with no real intention of trying to keep it in. Gee, how far and how hard a goods run there. It was amazing. At 33 years of age, it was a Gut buster, to be honest, and here he is again trying to win a clearance oh. and gets a free kick. Well, what goes towards the end of your career often is your pace, and there hasn't been any sign of it. Just watch how powerful Adam Goods is when he runs. He just pushes aside, having played a bit of footy against him. <laughs> Pretty obvious <laughs> free kick. But, but I mean, if you actually start at one side of the stoppage and just charge through to the open space, if the defender gets offside, you're in real trouble. Just runs with just so much power. Town City runs with his chest and people just hang off him. Well, this to equal his best against Collingwood. He's kicked three times on three occasions against the Pies before tonight. He's just had uh, a night out and he does get that third goal. And I reckon he's got those three Brownlow votes. When you see him like this, and I'll, I'll put it to you, Lee, when you see him like this, and you know, 328 games in, he's one of the great players, isn't no, he? No, he's been one of the great players. I mean, his first half tonight when the game was basically being won was just outstanding. He's sort of tailed off a little bit as the game's gone on, but really the most valuable players are the ones who win you the game. And the Swans, the Swans won the game with just an outstanding first half. That's where the break was created. He was the leader of it. He's got a fair distance, not with that kick so much, but over the night. And the, the bottom one, the sprint, almost two mm. kilometres flat out. He's amazing, isn't he? Yeah. Just, he's consistently on the move. And, uh, when your good players are doing that, it goes a long way to your winning. Mike Pike, almost. Hanabry digs it out. Too slick there for Jack. Jetta falling to the ground. Gave it to Everett. Everett swings it out wide. How will this one bounce? Parker's in front. Right in his hip pocket. McCaffer sort of bulldogs him down. Opportunity for Lynch in trouble. He was advantage, legged, advantage is paid. And Williams comes away and kicks down towards half forward. In front down there is Jolly, ball at his feet. He knows it's there somewhere. Cloak grabs it. Not the two guys you would have together in that tight situation. And Cloak's kick bounces out of bounds in the pocket. So that's a good result in its way. Things will stop and start again. Game pretty much out of steam now. 89-41. Flick down behind by Jolly, taken by Hanabry, will almost. And then McVeigh to Grundy, and then Grundy hooking back defensively. And a good mark by McCaffrey, he was quickest off Thanks the Mike. mark. Didn't play at all last year. He and Cracker did a lot of work together to get back last year after their knee injuries. And kicks to the front, well not quite to the front of the screen, a good mark coming across by Bird. To think that Matner and Shaw to come back in, Lewis Roberts, Thompson, yeah. I mean, and not, not mentioning Tippett, I mean, this team now can launch itself in the second half of the year. This is a sort of platform, this big performance tonight, that can really set your season up. Good tackle against Swan, unable to break clear, and that running power we see so often from him, and Collingwood fans get a free kick. Come around, come around. So Seedsman. Fanatical pie supporter as a kid. He even told Travis Cloak the boots that he used to wear when he first arrived for the club. And that's a good kick. Beautiful. That's a brilliant finish. And Connor would get the scoreboard ticking over in the final turn. 
Yeah, well, there's a bit of a roar for that. It's amazing. You look around the stadium. Yeah. I reckon there's 30,000 people gone home. Yep. Uh, which often happens if Collingwood are getting badly beaten. I can tell you when they, I think at three quarter time, a lot of the Collingwood fans said, I've seen enough. So matches to come, Brisbane, we've got that on a Friday night. It's next Friday night. That, That's a that, tough game. Lines are going yeah. to run. Always hard to beat at the Gabba. Melbourne, Queen, Queen's birthday, Western Bulldogs. So that, that's two matches, you'd say, the absolute overwhelming favourites in. So maybe a little bit of a breathing space. But that Brisbane game, critical now. Ball forcing forward. Richards cutting across. It's been a good duel, Richards and Cloak. Cloak's done very well against odds tonight. Dwyer, Swans with Smith down the line. O'Brien and just ricocheting away at a boundary throw in. So Collingwood have had a hard draw. They've done a good job to get the five wins, but that percentage will be a problem for them. They're almost certainly going to drop out of the eight at the end of this round. They were sitting in eighth spot, but with the worst percentage with those teams on five wins before tonight. Williams a high ball inside the forward 50. Elliot, what a mark. Oh, what a brilliant mark. Rampy landed hard. So did Elliot for that matter, and he'll line up directly in front. Now, bear in mind, last week, I know it sounds ridiculous, but last week the Swans led by 27 points midway through the final term and somehow were lucky to get out with a draw. And right now, Collingwood making their best run of the night. Admittedly, it's a much bigger margin. But about the same amount of time, Elliot swings a throw. Jamie Elliott's got a couple and Collingwood playing their best football of the night. Now, whether that's because the Swans have just packed the teepee away or whether the Swans are starting to run out of a bit of puff. They've worked very hard, certainly, tonight, but they're a goal away still from absolute disaster, Collingwood. It was important for Collingwood, one, one percentage to try and have a good last quarter, but to actually give you something, a bit of good form going to go into next week. So Elliot with a couple of goals. So the 54-point margin was a big one of the match. Back to 36. Lee, you talked about having good form coming in to next week. Well, look at the inside 50s. This is late, I know, but at least they're getting it ticking over. And the goals, at least Collingwood for the last five. I mean, it gives you something to work on. And as Dennis said, I mean, strange things happen in footy. And Collingwood have kicked two or three in quickly, but Sydney have been their masters oh. tonight. Poor handball by Malczewski. Oh. And suddenly Collingwood have been inspired. Kennedy winning a ball back. Next couple of minutes could get very interesting here. Kennedy got it from Bolton. Kicks to full forward. Cloak. Richards. Cloak. Can he get his foot to it? Not quite. And then Goods gets it back. And then Goods careful to Jetta. And they dodge a bullet there, Sydney. That's called classic outnumber footy there. It was a two one-on-ones for Collingwood. Adam Goods, the experienced head, got back to make it the third man in and just used his poise to get the uncontested mark for Jenner. High ball short of the wing. Lynch launched himself from behind. I'm with the crowd on that. I thought Collingwood stiff a couple of times there as the ball walked across the line by Pendlebury. Do you think some of the Collingwood fans who've left to start to come back in, yeah. perhaps? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. Tossed in, they're very unforgiving. Knocked down in front, Parker. Steps aside for Hanabry, and that's a tired kick. He puts it out of bounds on the full. So halfway through the term, and the margin has shrunk from 48 to what is it now? 36, 36 points. And they, oh. they get to get to 54 points in front, Dennis, at the start of this last quarter. I already got that, Bruce, but I thank you for your help. As Reed goes across the ground, taken by Maxwell. They're finding space for the first time in the game. Seedsman through midfield is Swan. Now can he come to the party? Swan goes short. Cracker gathers the bouncing ball. Split the indifference. Kicks it down towards full forward. Getting back the mark is taken by Grundy. He's been a good sweeper tonight, Grundy, hasn't he? He's done that a lot tonight. He's read the ball well and been the first to take that mark. McVeigh off a step to centre wing. Goods getting rid of his man. Great mark. I mean, a little push may be, but uh, it was a strong overhead mark. His hands have been wonderful tonight, Goods. I mean, his whole game has been outstanding. It's been about as oh. good as he's been all through that 328 games. Jack 
Parker, Hannabury, good kick, Morton, running hard, McGlynn. It'd be disappointing for Sydney if they don't finish off here tonight. They've done so much hard work. They've had Collingwood just where they want them, and they've given Collingwood just a little bit of hope, and that's in the back against Bolton. To Maxwell. And a quiet one, Jude Bolton. Maxwell's had a tough one, as you can see. Obviously identified as a key to Collingwood, and he's been hit hard a number of times. As the ball comes across half-back, that was a poor kick. Malczewski has the football, flicks it over the top. McGlynn, twisting, turning. Jetta, 45 metres out, sends it long down towards full forward. Morton from behind. They meet at the footy, and Collingwood can see to behind. Well done by Brown. Just a good mark. So short, Russell back out there, that's good news. Close to the line, but ball keeps it in, he's worked hard ball. Just his second game back at this level. And then, in that familiar style, hugging the line, Sydney with some numbers, running hard, Lynch, he's had a quiet night tonight, Lynch, he's had a quiet month to be honest after a promising start as a pie, and the ball hit kicking back, Everett trying to belt it away. Well done by Swan, good handball to Elliott, who's come alive in the last quarter. Blair's got it now, still short of the wing, short pass, Williams goes back, and the ball goes out of bounds. Well played by Rampy. Williams there expecting contact. He's a bit tired too, I think he's headed for the bench when he suddenly found himself in a marking contest. O'Brien's off, that's not good, but he needs a break as well. Boundary throw in. Mumford almost clean possession, involuntary clean possession. Kennedy came out of the pack, did well. Clark flicks it across. Now Pendlebury, very high ball, get under that. Reaching over the top, too easy for the defenders. Richard stumped it down in front. Just stepping onto the ground, O'Keefe almost took a hand pass from Jack. Now a chance as Kennedy gives it to Clark. Showed too much of it to Hanabry. And Hanabry marks, limping at centre half back. Whatever the soldier plays on, goes to Goods now. They can run the table right here. There's a man on down the ground. McVeigh ignores that, goes deeper. Initially it was going to be Bolton. Now it's with Jetta. He's 70 metres out. People suggesting he take on the man on the mark. He kicks it down towards full forward. Mike Pike! <laughs> That's to say, kicked it the best contested mark in the game, Mike Pike. Well, he didn't quite nail his jump that time. If my eyes didn't deceive me. He reached the height of where he was going to mark the ball and was on the way down as he took it. Well, the, the nearest Collingwood player was Sam Dwyer. So in terms of, uh, of reach, Dwyer was just... had no chance of getting anywhere near that one. They're going down, Tom. Pre prefers the contest. That was almost uncontested then, not his forte. Uh, just learning with his ball and finding out what works away from Canada. <laughs> Puts it through for his second goal, and that does it. It does pose a question when you talk about the, the riches that Sydney have with their key position of ruck players in particular, that Shane Mumford, Mike Pike, mm. Kurt Tippett comes in on form. He'd probably pick Pike and uh, Tippett, well, I guess. It might be him. that Sam Reid has pinned his quad, yep. so it just might be there's a slot there yep. to play the two... Two big ruckmen as well as Tippett. Yep. So the big kick. Tell us something about Mike Pye. You were there, Mickey, when he first arrived, weren't you? Yeah, look, uh, obviously coming a long way. <laughs> Just basically packed the bags and got rocked up at the SCG. And uh, we've seen what he's uh, been able to do over the last few years. But uh, it's all about the work rate for Mike Pike. He knows where he's at with his footy. We're astonished by his improvement. Are you? Uh, no, because you don't see the stuff that he's doing by himself, and that's conti continually just all the extras and the hard work that he puts in hour after hour is uh, is amazing. That crowd of 65,300 is the fourth biggest home and away crowd for the Swans. So 65,000, cracker, held up. So the fourth biggest home and away crowd for Sydney. Hannibal getting down low, being ridden, a little handball, McVeigh, who Mickey O told us would play in the back half a fair bit, and he does, and then back to Bird, and then Bird around the corner to centre wing, contested footy, calling with quick hands by Pendlebury, O'Brien trapping cleverly, and then strong through the hips, Harry O, well done, Maxwell couldn't quite, and then side bottoms had a quiet one, good hands, and now Goods comes away and gets his kick. 
So the fourth biggest crowd ever for Sydney home and away. It's the 134th biggest crowd for Collingwood. <laughs> Josh has got too much time now. There's a ball come short and George Marks will begin to change gates. <laughs> what a game he's played. Play on. Fitting. Round nine. Indigenous round. Sends it down towards half forward. Mumford goes after it. Jetta. The longer it's gone, the better he's got. 70 metres out. Nobody home though. Side bottom. Swan is on in the middle. O'Brien is deeper. In the moment almost passed. Now Swan continues his run, gets the football now. But I think O'Brien's just about had enough. He can't run on, but gee, he's worked hard tonight. Here's Lynch, quiet night. 14-12, 8-5. Big win for Sydney. As Lynch goes down towards half forward, working in front, Richards could have almost got a free kick. Kennedy liked the look of this youngster. Drives it long down towards Jolly. Jolly and Goods. Goods leads back in the race. This is his natural habitat compared to Jolly. Too much pace, too much finesse. Goes with the outside of the boot and finds McVeigh. Can't put your arms it's been up. Terrific there. McVeigh. 50 metres. You can't put your arms up. It's a 50 metre penalty. <laughs> Not sure what's happened there. Is that a good set of a word to somebody in the crowd, do you think? He, he definitely pointed, went back and pointed at someone in the crowd. Something uh, uh, has happened there. Well, you can only sort of guess, can't you, Richo, or surmise. Let's, uh, he, he just pointed back again to the crowd, so he's definitely not happy about something. And this is the opening match of the Indigenous round, so kick out wide, coming from Clark, and marked by Lynch. So the steward there, so... A flashpoint late in this match. Well, if, yeah, you'd, you'd hate to think that the worst in that situation, but well, there's only one thing we are thinking is about. Exactly, yeah. and if that is the case, oh, no, no, uh, that's just appalling behaviour. Oh, and to a champion of the game who's having a champion night. Oh, he's a sensible bloke, Adam Goods. He doesn't jump at shadows. And here's Harry O'Brien winding one up. In front, Everett. Balls behind to Richards. Smith, Rundy. Keith. Steady tonight. His 25th possession. The kick got there quickly, made it easy for Everett. Malcheski. Very good again tonight, up to 28 possessions. Rampy. An emerging talent goes down the line and finds Parker. Parker's something of a battering ram in this team. Most of them are. They play a physical style of football. Kieran Jack comes back to McVeigh. A bit going on in the area to which Goods pointed. That's what the booing's all about. Scott Pendlebury. Now it's going to be a free kick, I think, to Pendlebury. The officials moved in over there. What can we see? As the ball comes towards Reed. Bruce is having a sticky beak now. Yeah, I, I think they have, Dennis. I'm not sure. I've come in late on it, but the officials are just coming down from the back of the stand there, but I felt like they might have escorted someone away. I could be wrong. I didn't actually see that, but the reaction and seeing them come back. So, and here they've come there down to ground level, maybe wanting to identify somebody at this very point. And that's perhaps asking for people. Witnesses, are they, or is that the offending party? I would not be sure, but security seem to think they've got their woman as this ball misses to the near side. Still, we'll hear more about that, I would think. So a big story in the dying minutes of this one in Indigenous round. Now watch this. So here's what we think happened. So it's close to the boundary. Okay, well, it's obvious. Well, we know who Adam Goods is nominated. Yeah, like a police lineup, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep, it was. Well, it's sort of just taken everything away from where we've been at the moment. Seedsman's kick. And then Seedsman trying to get it back. And the ball whipped out. I mean, for Adam on this indigenous round, I mean, Mickey, you, you know him better than all of us put together. I mean, there's a massive round for him, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he's obviously out, he's coming off at the moment now, but he's had a huge game. He's obviously 
I think I think we all agree he's going to get the three Brownlow votes. And uh, to that to happen at the end of his uh, great game, as Tom mentioned, uh, it's uh, that's a, it's a real shame. Just have to caution too, Bruce. We're not sure of the facts down there. They'll emerge, I'm sure, after the game. So let's keep an open mind. But the ball's gone out of bounds. And in fact, it's a behind. What a performance by Sydney tonight. I don't think any of us quite saw this scoreboard coming. It looked, no, well, it looked a 55-45 game. was so it? good last Saturday night. You thought, well, they're, uh, that's going to be a 50-50 game. But Sydney have totally dominated and just the Collingwood structurally, we'll talk about it after the match, but yeah. the Lynch wits jolly thing hasn't worked, has it? No, well, I, particularly when uh, when not, Lynch hasn't got the ball as a forward anyway. I mean, Clake's been good, but uh, it hasn't been prolific, but he's certainly been their best big forward. But neither wits nor uh, Susie has gone down. And... Yeah. And so away from the spotlight at the end yeah. of the match, Adam Goods, that is That's interesting. Right. Yeah. I mean... I'm sure Richo would have run out to him very quickly had he been on the ground, so he's gone down into the race. Yeah, a few uh, people have followed him down as well, so mm. we'll just have to see if he comes back out when the siren goes, boys. So McVeigh's kick forward, and then Bird belting that ball forward, Maxwell and Bolton. They've been together a lot tonight. On the ball. Just let it go, Nick. So again, we're thinking now that could be an emotional reaction, couldn't it? Yeah. This of all nights. Wow. So the other great warrior, Goods and Bolton have played 298 games together. <laughs> Second only to Edwards and McLeod. There's the siren. So on Friday Night Football, another kick after the siren. This one, not quite as dramatic as last week. <laughs> Bolton. Steps inside the 50, kick is on the way, and he's got it. Yeah. Hasn't been the best of nights for Jude Bolton, but that's a terrific kick to end it. An exclamation point. since Sydney have kicked 100 points against Collingwood and they did it with the very last kick of the night. Talk about an explanation mark as Dennis said. Let's go down to you Richo. Hey Brian, that was a, a great win against a pretty good team. We had a great win last week and you just mentioned the G hasn't been a happy hunting ground really if you look over the last few years. Yeah, well Collingwood and the MCG has been uh, pretty tough for us. So it was, we made a real focus. We had to bounce back from the last couple of weeks. We were pretty disappointed in a way, especially that last week's game slipped from us. So we came out here, everyone played their role. Everyone just had a real crack on that's the basis of it. What was the real focus? You looked to be getting a lot of numbers back into your defensive 50. You didn't give them much space at all for their small forwards tonight. It was all about work rate. We just had to work hard and we, you know, back our fitness and our, our two-way running. And your role, you had a pretty tough one chasing Scott Pendlebury around. Oh, he's a classy player, yeah. He's one of the best, so, yeah, always tough. Yeah, well done, mate. Good win. Thanks, mate. Norm Smith Bennell here at the end of September 8 in the grand final last year. So just a moment ago, here's Adam Goods walking through the room. This is about 30 seconds ago by himself. And uh, John Longmire about to go down as well. And we saw Adam pointing at a spectator about five minutes ago. The spectator did leave the ground with a couple of security people around him. He left the ground early. And back to you, Richo, to Dan Hannabry, whose reputation continues to soar, Matthew, in that he stood up again tonight. He certainly did. Dan, your, your own form, it was a great win by the team, but you've really gone up another level with your own footy. Oh uh, yeah, well, I think um, a lot of the, a lot of our midfielders are, are playing good footy, which helps. And um, we've worked really hard in the pre-season, even though we had a short turnaround. And 
Look, we've had a disappointing, I think, couple of games against Geelong and Hawthorne, but it's good to get a win tonight, and I think it's a real statement going for us, and hopefully uh, sets us up for the rest of the year. Certainly does. What about you? Said you're, going, you're really going into the midfield. It allows McVay to not have to go through there quite as much now. Yeah, we've got, we've got big depth there. I think we've got a lot of guys that can go through there. Parks, he chats himself, Birdie, along with the, the guys that are regularly in there, like Joey and, and Kizra and that. So, um, yeah, it gives us a bit, a bit of flexibility, especially with a few key players that aren't playing at the moment. So, um, no, we'll take a mate. Long way to go. It's a marathon. So, uh, that's a good start. you got Kurt Tippett to come back in the team, but can you fit him in at the moment? Uh, I think I said earlier in the week that you can't, but I mean, it's pretty obvious we didn't recruit him to play too, so I'm pretty sure he'll play when he's right to go. Pretty sure he will. Well done, Dan. Cheers. Thanks, Richard. So, for Bucks, not the night he wanted. I mean, he's a real setback for Collingwood. Absolutely. And, and the Swans, I mean, we lured Geelong. What a fantastic club they've been for the last, well, well best part of a decade. But you say about the Swans, they just keep... Uh, Mickey, you've been you've been part of it, but the number of players, young players, players from other clubs that come into the organisation and just seem to thrive as footballers. Yeah, it's been an amazing, I guess, decade as well for the Swans. Yeah, been, absolutely. Uh, they've yeah. been uh, one of the... I guess powerhouses in the AFL, and it's all about that culture, that blood's culture that, uh, that's been, I guess, well known. But uh, for me, it's always been about the young guys buying in, and they're, they're made to earn their spot. And it's, uh, I think, from the coaching staff to the trainers to certainly the older players, they're really showing these guys what Sydney is about, what Sydney, uh, what their football is all about, what they, I guess, they treasure, and what they uh, are going into these games. What I respect. Mickey, I've got to ask you, are you a little, are you stirred up a bit tonight? I mean, we're just seeing Adam there now. I mean, are you a little uh, unsettled right now? Yeah, I am a little bit. It's very, very disappointing. Obviously, it's Indigenous round. Uh, the champs played an amazing game today. And uh, to see that, I mean, we don't know the full facts yet, but to see that is really disappointing. And he's obviously a, a really uh, close mate of mine. And well, it's, uh, whatever's happened... Whether it be racist or not, something has happened that has really upset him. There's yeah, no question that. about that. And I think uh, Tom's already pointed out he, he doesn't jump at shadows. And if there's something to, to happen like that, he would be absolutely... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not too sure, I guess, the, the emotion and the, the words are escaping me at the moment. But uh, Well, this is unusual that Adam's not out there with them right now, isn't it? I was going to say, Mickey, you know more than anyone else. Obviously, yes. He, he yes. loves the boys, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. I, look, and to put it uh, to be as, as honest as I can, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's downstairs and, he's, and steam's coming out the, the ears at the moment. Um, for him not to go out there and, and be a part of that, um, I, I can see the, how frustrated and, and angry is probably the best word that uh, would describe it at the moment. Again, we don't know exactly what's happened, but... Um, I uh, wonder if he'll take part in the team song now. We're about to find out, aren't we? Because the boys are about to join him. Here he is. Well, he's there now. <laughs> It's been a magnificent performance by this team. It really has. I mean, right from the word go, they were dominating the match, but not the scoreboard early. But in the end, they dominated everywhere, didn't they? And just, I mean, it's the senior players and Goodsy's one off. The Mickey O set it up as well with Brett Kirk as Stewie Maxfield. They just have a real reverence when young players come in. Dane Rampey's come in from a subordinate league. Jed Lamb comes in. Andreas Everett rises to the occasion. Luke Parker. It is that blood's culture. It's been spoken about for a long time. And we saw it on absolute display tonight, led by the champ. Adam Goods. Well, it's the first time they've played a Friday night match at the MCG, home and away for 15 years. This has been a Fox Footy production for Fox Sports.